Young Michiganders may be saying so long to their home state. A yeah, new poll reveals over 26% of Michigan residents aged 18 to 29 say they're leaving the state within the next 10 years, while another 18% aren't sure if they'll be able to stick around either. Meanwhile, engineers just gave the state's infrastructure a C minus rating. Here to react is former Michigan gubernatorial candidate, Tudor Dixon. Tudor, good morning. Thanks good morning. for joining us. Thank you. Why do you think this is? Well, because we don't have any jobs. There's no businesses. The, the economic status of Michigan is very low. And even when we graduate students from our universities, they leave. They get taken up by the big tech companies. We don't, we, we've been automotive for so long, but automotive has somewhat held us hostage, and we haven't been able to bring new companies into the state. Gretchen Whitmer was asked during the campaign multiple times, what is your plan to bring young people to the state? And over and over again, she said abortion. I cannot imagine that being an economic plan. And it has proven that it's not an economic plan. And now we hear young people saying they're leaving. This is devastating news. That's, that's just gruesome, actually. It's gruesome. Yeah. Yeah, we wow. hear so much about everyone leaving California and leaving New York. We don't hear a lot about everyone choosing or many people choosing to leave to leave Michigan. Where, I'm curious, you know, where do young people that graduate from the University of Michigan or whether or not they graduate high school mission, where are they going? If they're leaving Michigan, where are they going for jobs? I mean, I, Mich University of Michigan is very liberal. Many of them are going to New York and California. And the parents there, it's interesting because the family dynamic is we're afraid that we're losing our kids. We're sending mm. our kids to universities coming from these value-based communities in Michigan. And then they want to leave and they go to these communities where they're not family-based. They're not telling them to get married and have kids you know their the career is the most important and they feel like they're losing their children so I've had value-based universities come to me and say hey can you start talking about us because there is another option for families out there just like we see school choice for K through 12 parents are starting to look at different opportunities at universities as well well you do have Hillsdale yes uh, we so do that's that's been a model for a lot of people I want to move to another topic because the Biden administration is pulling grants for an energy firm with Chinese ties in a stunning reversal. So uh, the, China is defending the ban on the U.S. memory chip maker Micron. It's accusing Washington of, um, of, of economic coercion. What's your take on this? Because the interesting part of this story is Micron's an American chip company. Um, it was decided that we should protect that because that's important to us. And yet there's all these American companies who are taking the side of China who's trying to fight this uh, protection. So why are these American companies doing it? It seems like they're, they just want business with China. They're signaling to them because it's yeah. very short-sighted and frankly unpatriotic. So there's two interesting things here. We have one where the Department of Energy has come out and they've said we're not going to grant money to a Chinese corporation. This is the first time we've seen this. And this is interesting from a Michigan perspective because we've had senators and congressmen come out and say Michigan needs to stop giving taxpayer money to the Chinese. Right. So to see the Biden administration, in fact, it was Jennifer Granholm, a former governor of Michigan, who said we're pulling grant money, we're not going to give it to the Chinese. That's a good sign. I wish Gretchen Whitmer would follow suit and we would stop bringing Chinese corporations that have connections to the CCP, to the U.S. But when you talk about China doing this, how adorable that they're saying we're the security <laughs> risk. I right. think that's <laughs> ridiculous. On, on that topic, I remember a couple months ago I interviewed you on this show about, I think, two different efforts to make electric car batteries yes. in Michigan. China was investing in kind of shell American efforts. And you were pushing back real heavy against Gretchen Whitmer on Michigan subsidizing that. Where where do you stand on that? Or where does Michigan stand on that in there light a, of this? There was a, There's one called Goshen. There was a big fight over that. The community is still battling it. It'll be $715 million of taxpayer funds that will go into this company. The other one is Cattle that is uh, partnered with Ford, still a Chinese company. Governor Youngkin said, no way, you're not bringing this to Virginia. Gretchen Whitmer said, bring it in. And I think it'll be about $2 billion mm. that goes into to that of taxpayer funds. So people in Michigan are really fighting this, saying we want to have American companies. Why is it that Dallas can bring in 200 headquarters in the last 10 years and Michigan is getting nothing but Chinese corporations? That's scary. We have the greatest resource in the country with the amount of water we have. We need to be careful of using that wisely.
Really quickly before we go, so with all of these, um, with, with the back and forth between China and the United States on these economic issues, there's been a lot of suspicion that we why, have we, why have we bent over backwards at every turn for China? And then all of a sudden, here we have the Biden administration declining these grants. Why do you, how do you explain the turn here with the Biden administration? I think we, we created China. There was this false sense of security. We have put mm -hmm. so much business into China and we are very interwoven with China. We learned that during COVID, not only is it manufacturing, but it's pharmaceuticals. And so now that we see China becoming a power, China meeting with Putin, you have Xi meeting with Putin, Xi saying, Saying he's going to broker peace he's taking that next step to be the world power and this is when the the biden administration has to say okay he's crossed a line we have to be careful with how much power we give him on the united states land well we'll see if it's a first if you're if you're correct there then maybe it's a first and a turn towards recognizing the threat that is china or That's maybe right. it's the aberration we'll soon wow. find out and micron's an important piece of this puzzle for america we need to really protect our Absolutely. chips, our memory chips. Thank you. Tudor Dixon, thank you so much. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmeade. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.